Let's talk about Martin Rose Spring 2024 menswear in a bit more detail than I did before in the last show. Um, I'm really impressed by it, legitimately. And I have to say, I'm really happy and impressed by it because I'm really glad that Martin Rose never ended up taking a job at Big Luxury House. I'm sure it was offered. Like, my kind of, you know, um, hunch would be that either she was offered a role and rejected it or she got overlooked for a role and then decided, you know what, I don't really care anymore now. But regardless, I'm happy that Martin Rose has the ability now to just do her own thing with the brand that she has now and also do other collaborations and also do this new gig that she already has now with Flipping Clocks, actually. Let's actually check that, actually, before we go to the collection. I actually want to see what that news is with Clocks. I remember seeing it here on Hypebeast. They featured a little post regarding Martin Rose's new role there at Clark's. And I want to see what the shoes look like because I'm really curious to see what she's done because I feel like Martin Rose has a really interesting perspective on footwear design. So I'm curious to see how she approached the whole Clark's role as a guest um, creative director. So this is the first post here. Martin Rose previews are up and coming collection with um, Clark's. Let's see what the shoes here say. Courtesy of Hypebeast. I want to see what they look like. It kind of looks like from first accounts, like a classic Dr. Martin type of boot. Oh, wow, look at that. It's a completely different silhouette. I've never seen that silhouette from Flipping Clocks. It basically looks like a high heel loafer type of shoe. Um, completely different than what you've used to seeing from Clocks. And then they've got like what looks like a Dr. Martin-esque type of shoe. And from what I can see here, there's one that looks like a wingtip on the left-hand side in the leather. And there's one here that looks like a, I don't know how to describe it. Kind of like a vulcanized um dr martin's 14 19 14, no, 14 90 or whatever i've got it kind of looks the similar like that and it's got really really thin laces on it i kind of like the look of it i'm not going to lie um the sole is really interesting it kind of reminds you of the lunar nikes from back in the day it's all kind of like one bulbous little unit it's not as thick as i'd probably want it that's the only thing i think martin rose has a thing about not having overly thick soles um i kind of like my soles to be a bit thicker but these look really interesting so I guess we've got three models here so far. We've got these high heels for women. And then we've got, with really, actually the heels look really comfortable. They've got a really, really thick heel down the back of the, um, they've got a really thick heel, sorry. So it can kind of, you know, help in terms of comfortability from what I've heard from the ladies. The thinner the heel, the harder they are to walk. So when that surface area is a bit wider, it kind of makes them way more comfier to wear. Even if the heel is really high, it can still be super comfy, even more comfy to wearing a pair of trainers. So it looks pretty cool. And then, of course, as I said before, you've got what looks like an Oxford shoe. Um, and it kind of looks like it's all done in, kind of been enveloped in cool kind of one piece in a weird way. Um, maybe the top is made out of another material than the, than the midsole, but it kind of looks like they're all the same thing. And you've got the same approach here on the black pair also. And really, like I said, really thin laces. They kind of remind me of the laces that you see in Salomon shoes and shit. Very, very thin laces. So I'm curious to see what the vibe is and what they look like overall in person, but they look pretty cool to start off with. So I'm really happy about that. But going back to the flipping Martin Rose show, actually, spring 2024, the first thing I wanted to mention regarding this is just a setting. It reminded me a lot of the of the first kind of veteran runway show that they did in 2015 when Demna used to design for it and if i remember correctly it was at some club it was at a nightclub and the music was super loud in there yeah there we go see um at the basement of a famous gay club called le deep le depot le depot and i remember it being really dark and stuff and it was a great kind of I felt introduction to the brand Vetemar and the community of people behind it. Loads of the models that walked the show were involved in the quote unquote cover designing of the brand. When it first started, the whole idea behind it was that it was designed by a community, which I don't really believe. I feel like Demino was doing it from the beginning, but he kind of didn't want the limelight and probably was afraid. If people say it was shit, you could kind of hide behind. It's a collective sort of thing. But I do remember some of the models, you know, I used to see them out and about in East London and shit. So I was kind of cool to see them featured on the runway at Vetemar. So you kind of see, you know, what the vibe was there. But the, this show from Martin Rose reminded me a lot of it because this Martin Rose show, if I'm not mistaken, took place in a community club centre thing that we have here in the UK. We don't really have many of them. They've all kind of, I feel like I don't know, they've all kind of disappeared in the same way like youth clubs don't exist anymore. But the last one that I can remember that kind of had a similar sort of feel was this place called Efez 
in Dawson, which was essentially like a snooker club, but also had a kind of community vibe type of feel. And then there was another place as well, more specifically around West Ham area. That was a community club where essentially sometimes after Sunday league games, we'd go there to have drinks or to have meals, or it'd be a place where you'd have like your end of season presentation. You'd get awards and medals and shit. It was kind of, a, you know, the local kind of, you know, club clubhouse sort of vibe. So the local cricket club would go there and do their thing, rugby, all that stuff. So that kind of vibe kind of reminded me of. So if anything, it really centered this collection in the UK, in London and whatever it may be. And the clothes kind of resonate a lot with again the way that i've kind of grew up and the kind of things that i've kind of been into um the track pants the track suit jackets again i've loved a mix um between you know the silk tops and uh what you would describe maybe as more like you know cis masculine gendered kind of track suits the kind of fusion behind those type of things is really really cool the friction sorry between those two things i really really like um the shoes actually that i thought were women's actually might be unisex because this model here may be wearing the same shoe i'm not too sure if that's the same one it kind of looks like it but i don't think it is i don't think so. i think it might be a bit different actually than this heel that i've got featured here I think it's slightly different actually. It's a bit more of a wider, um, you know, wider tip here on the sole, on the toe, sorry, which is kind of a signature Martin Rose thing that she does with her loafers. You get these kind of really nice African uncle cut that's kind of really rectangle. Um, and obviously something that Balenciaga do, but I'm sure she's done a lot of work with Demna um, in the past and Vettel Mars, like why you get a lot of kind of overlap, especially with some of the outerwear. I feel like some of her mountain jackets and stuff, they kind of give me a lot of Vettel Mars, Demna sort of vibe. But yeah, the friction between these two sort of things is really cool. You got these really amazing leather pants and look five and this great little blouse, flowery thing with the pearls. Like this to me looks like a look that I would be in every day, mate. This is a fantastic, like, it's probably the best version of, like, a perfect Bergheim panorama by outfit. You could easily take off the top and be dancing in the main floor of Bergheim and be great. Put on the shirt, go up as a pano and be twirling your hands and be feeling absolutely fantastic also. So I love that. This model here is really interesting. Look number six, because I feel like this looks like Martin Rose. I'm not sure if it's done on purpose or not, but she basically looks like Martin Rose um, with the lipstick and the frizzy and the frizzy hair with the grey with the greys here and there, I really like the look of it. Um, the trousers that kind of look like they've been, you know, they kind of skewed a little bit in terms of proportions and stuff. They look really cool, but that model's a look. I'm out in rows. You've got a really nice suiting here that looks, that reminds me a lot of like, the ceilings you'd have in houses or the curtains in some council houses around the UK. Sometimes you have this kind of wallpaper effect where you have this kind of weird suede um, relief type pattern on top of it. I'm not sure some of you guys remember that sort of thing. That kind of reminds me of that. The really long pearl necklaces are really cute as well. I like the look of those. Again, I'm not really too fan of that one. Nice leather look there with the pantyhose. Again, the friction with this kind of, what would you call it? Um... I guess you'd call it some sort, I guess you'd call it a blouse, right? This kind of blouse that looks like it's made, made out of silk or satin and a nice, you know, loose fluorescent shirt on top and some jeans and some boots. Like, that is ridiculously good, that look number 10. I love everything about look number 10. Um, again, look number 12, again, is very is very much giving Martin Rose type of vibes with a big lipstick and the curly hair. That shirt is absolutely amazing. There's a great piece of jewelry there, this metal type of bar box here on top. Looks really great. The leather pants fit great. Good little loafers there with the contrast stitching again. Very much giving ankle vibes. This reminds me a lot of the character um, from flipping The Wire, the guy with the guns that whistles and shit with a long jacket that kind of reminds me of that sort of vibe or maybe um the denzel washington's movie is it son of sam or I forgot what it's called where he kind of walks around with glasses and a gun and shit it kind of reminds me of that sort of vibe this long olive coat that goes maybe floor length great pair of trousers again is that silk is that satin? i'm not too sure the heart on the belt the pearls like it's fucking beautiful man like martin rhodes is definitely one of our better designers here in london for sure she's absolutely amazing man another great look here again not too sure the material the materials on on some of these looks look really interesting i'd love to see what they look like in hand because some of it looks like it might be patent some of it looks like it might be leather it could be pvc i'm not really too sure what the mix is i love this look also with this big fluffy bag on look number 16 that looks great look number 17 the same thing that kind of 
like olive green kind of flavor i'm not too sure what this this kind of is like a coat hanger i'm not too sure what this bar is that's going around the top over the head like a necklace or whatever but that looks really interesting uh, we've got a great little bum bag accessory there from martin rose that's probably going to be very popular with some of the club kids out there great pair of pearl necklaces again with the big red lipstick I can't wear that probably because I said Rocky doesn't like people. My skin color wearing contrasting um, or bright colors flipping lipstick. Uh, again, with a great look with the long coat and the pearls. That's fucking brilliant with a big pair of jeans. But my favorite look of all is definitely look number 20. Um, look, the guy's giving that that bomber jacket a good look because that bomber jacket is absolutely banging. It's absolutely covered. If we zoom in here, actually, we can see it better. It's absolutely covered in these cool little badges and pins all over the place. I'm sure this is probably going to be made in very small quantity, I'd imagine. Like, it's absolutely crazy. It looks like it's probably all done by hand, I'd imagine. It's got some safety pins. It's got bottle cap openers. It's got badges. It's got actual, actual bottles from beer bottles that's been stuck on there. It looks flipping crazy good with a pair of flipping shorts. And um, what, what are the shoes? Oh, wow. Is that a pair of Air Maxes? I'm not sure. No, they look like Essex to me, right? Are they Essex? Yeah, they may be Essex. They may be what we saw here in the background of this shoe. So it might be that shoe there at the back. Maybe that's a model. I'm not really too sure. But they kind of look like Essex to me. Whatever that shoe is there. I'm not really too sure what it is. But that's a, probably a collab. that's probably soon to come out. And I'm also not mad at these almost, um, you know, sheer, I guess, pantyhose type socks things. I remember Random Identities had the similar sort of vibe of these kind of like athletic sock length. Yeah, socks that are like athletic length but they kind of got a bit of a pantyhose vibe about them i kind of don't mind these in the slightest they look really really cool um anyway we continue let's take that out there let's go on the next look uh, i like the look of these also oh look at the flipping trousers on them look at they got leather patches on the knees i kind of like that little detail you've got a t-shirt here that says blow your mind i guess there with martin rose graphic and again the pearls i feel like pearls are a little bit overdone but with this look that they're featured in, they look great. Oh, that's my favorite. This belt is great. They've taken the Rizzler logo that's synonymous with people here in London who fucking love to smoke fucking rollies. And they've kind of flipped it with Rose on it with a plus sign. That looks really great. That might be the hint of a diffusion line. Maybe it's Martin Rose and Rose Plus. I'm not too sure, but that belt looks great. I love that belt. That's a really good idea. Very, very clever use um, of a logo flip there. Um, from martin rose this look here with the big fur jacket is really beautiful too these jeans are going to be extremely popular the same way how the jeans that i think from martin rose that i forgot who else was wearing them for a while in fashion maybe it was kanye i'm not too sure but these jeans are going to be very popular with the um with the with i don't know buckles towards the end they look like you can cinch the trousers a little bit or make them a little bit wider if need be these are going to be very 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 popular i definitely imagine that to be the case and again more little pearls here with the models the casting's fucking awesome i love i love casting like this i don't always want to see fucking twink 19 year olds wearing clothes and looking fantastic i want to see semi quote-unquote real people um and a broad spectrum of ages and interests and stuff going forward so i love that another great look there some interesting shoe choices also here cool another great look here look 24 i'm always a big fan of big fluorescent safety type jackets again you know this is kind of my vibe anyway in terms of the stuff that i wear i'm always going to fucking you know army surplus stores and getting jackets and shit to wear so that sort of stuff is definitely vibing with me you got the same trousers again in like looks like a faux leather effect pant style with the buckles at the bottom also i think they're going to be very popular as well whoops move that there let's continue nice look there 25 great look there on 26 27 we love this we love that oh these pants also i think i made the point to say before that i had in my mind for a while um an opportunity oh no, i had in my mind an idea to start making like pants that i went to wear that particular shape and whatnot and my main inspiration was like the pants that you know local builders and handymen and flipping bin men wear they're kind of fluorescent and usually they have different kind of color blockings all over them and i wanted to make them a particular style with that sort of style so it's a particular fit but have a particular kind of color blocking so it maybe didn't look like you're a bin man, but it kind of had the same sort of pattern and then i saw the flipping martin rose collection i was like damn it if i end up making them now because people have got recency bias they're gonna think immediately that i'm kind of copying 
Martin Rose when actually I'm trying to copy flipping local council bin men and shit which is definitely a sign for me to just do the idea, execute it, put it out there, and whether it happens, happens. But kind of holding onto stuff and procrastinating really is the enemy of fucking progress, essentially, when it comes to ideation. So I'm really disappointed I didn't ship those, but I'm definitely going to do them anyway in the future, regardless, especially if I want to wear them. This whole entire leather look is great. Um, this is one of my favorite looks, actually. This entire, actually, one of my favorite items in this collection is this red jacket. It's essentially like a really interesting mix between a vintage mountain jacket like a north face or a you know whatever else and then it's also a good mix between like a barber and an m65 it's got that sort of vibe um in terms of the pocket placement the belt the shape it's a really interesting like a fusion essentially they're taking the sleeves of a mountain jacket and attached it to a barber but then obviously updated the colors because you're never going to get a barber in this mass in this nice red you know um sort of finish it looks really really great to be fair i love it that looks fucking beautiful. I'm a big fan of that jacket. Um, and then again, this hoodie is going to be really popular too. I'd imagine with a lot of the kids. Martin Rose Sports written there really well. Um, these pants are amazing. These loungy striped pants look really great. That fluffy bag is awesome. I guess it's the same coat as well. That long length coat, but maybe it's a bit shorter there. It comes just underneath the bum. And then we've got a couple more looks here. Another great look. This, yeah, this is a quintessential look that I would kind of wear as well. Like, this is an incredible look. You've got this amazing, it kind of looks like, um, it kind of looks like a corset, the top a little bit, but it's not. It's kind of got a similar sort of vibe to it. And then it's got the pair of construction, you know, everyday type of pants, whatever it may be called, that sort of pattern. And then you've got this amazing fur coat on top. So it's a great mix between like being incredibly, incredibly chic and also very, uh, practical day-to-day -day in terms of wearing i love the flipping mix on them this actually is a good platform of styling if you wanted to do this you could easily copy this look yourself with your own little bits and bobs so i love the look of that actually um actually it might be something that i actually might do actually for a night out maybe change the top and just buy a pair of these pants from like a local you know um, hardware store whatever it may be and a vintage fur somewhere from maybe you know flipping beyond retro or whatnot and then kind of just floss back on the fucking streets of dawson for one more night just to kind of remind people of my fucking power that might have to be the vibe and again a nice real jacket here look number what's that 37 yeah look number 34 actually this orange jacket this orange parker is beautiful too again i love that most of these things are probably inspired by like vintage items that she kind of maybe redesigns or edits and stuff or maybe it's come straight from her mind I'm not too sure but martin has a real talent for designing great um you know vintage retro inspired fucking outerwear pieces that i'm all over this is the kind of stuff that you would maybe find in a flea market in a kilo cell somewhere in berlin or prague or fucking krakow i love the look of this and it's even got a pair of matching pants also so that looks flipping great and then we continue here 35 and then a nice jumper look there 37 38 and 39 here to end as well with these jorts that are going to be everywhere they look like jorts so they could be a scum for sure but they look like a jort length i'm not too sure about but again these socks i'm not mad at i'm not mad at these socks these socks are really really interesting again the sheer kind of you know application there and this nice little uh, pile fur type number in terms of the jacket so martin rose absolutely smashed it i love everything about it there's a short clip as well from the collection i'm going to play here video that kind of features some of the vibes so you can see what the kind of vibe was in terms of the show itself let's play the little clip here courtesy of fashion report <laughs> legit reminds me of that first collection for Vetterman because I swear to God I remember the video of it was in a club and the the people the, the, the models were walking right by the people that were sitting down and it was super loud it was really in a tight little space I love how they did it it's really really cool I love it but it also reminds me of like being in these kind of community club center type things where well, first thing you remember is like in you know, it always smells like shit it always smells like cigarettes beer on the carpet or fucking vomit somewhere along those lines but they felt really really homely as well in a weird way
so much attitude. I fucking love Martin Rose. So fucking good. So underrated. Like I said, I'm so happy that it didn't work out, the Louis Vuitton thing, selfishly. I'm sure maybe she probably would have liked to have done something like that. It's probably the, you know, it's a great probably compliment to your work to get recognised by those big luxury houses. But selfishly, as a fan of fashion and a fan of the brand, I'm happy that all her creative juices and inspiration is going to be funneled for a flipping Martin Rose. And we're going to get unapologetic um, representation of what she's about and what she's into courtesy of her and the team and so i'm really really happy about it i'm not gonna lie And as great the pictures look, these clothes always look better in motion. They always look much better in motion, most of these pieces. They look great, obviously, in the 2D image, but once you see them in motion, people wearing them like that, and that bomber jacket, the yellow one with all the flipping bottle caps and stuff all over it, is an absolute winner of a piece. I definitely see someone like an ASAP Bari wearing that jacket sometime soon. <laughs> Martin Rose, absolutely incredible. Loved it. Every bit of it. Martin Rose Spring 2024 menswear available to check out on Vogue Runway. Check it out, Vogue.com, and you'll be able to check it out and see that. It's absolutely banging. Love every single bit of it. And then, of course, the other bit as well, um, as an introduction or another kind of reminder of what they've done with Nike, they've got these flipping shock mule things that are probably due to come out very soon. Not really the biggest fan of them, but something also entitled me thinks you know what i kind of like the challenge of trying to make these work because i have a feeling these type of shoes it's essentially like a, a sock uh, sorry a nike shock that's been you know elongated a little bit um they kind of feel like a shoe that would only work for somebody that's underneath you know that's under a size nine or something uk but i, f I would accept the challenge of trying to make these work as a size what 11 or something uk actually that would be a really good challenge to see can you actually freak these and make these work with a fucking gigantic uk 10 to uk 11 flipping foot that would be an absolute challenge to do and i'd I gladly accept them as a flipping shoe to freak because there's something very unique about these shoes that would definitely stand out from the dredges of fucking new balances and you know nonsense shoes that everybody's wearing day to day these actually are a little bit more you know a little bit more risque um but will definitely get you challenging yourself and kind of maybe thinking of different ideas in terms of looks that you can put together to make these work um this is courtesy of sneaker new just says martin rose prepares new nike shocks r4 colorways for spring summer 24 the beloved likes of Kendrick Lamar, who gave a shout out to design in his verse of Hillbillies. Just finished the latest show, London's Fashion Week, alongside Playful Tailoring, as well as a Nike Shock Retro. The following the success initial release, the Martin Shock R4 will be releasing in not just one or two, but what looks like to be three new colorway sites for spring 2024 arrival. Um, he enjoyed a closer look at them. So you've got a pair that looks like they're a bit more black, purpley, and blue. You've got a really nice yellow sunset colorway and then a nice kind of sky blue um to purple type of vibe as well going on there and also the, i think there's a black pair in the background there also it might be the no it actually might be this the toe of that actually I'm, I, I'm confused but they look really cool i love the look of them i don't actually recognize seeing them on the runway maybe my eyes are not really the greatest if you go back on the runway i don't really end up i didn't see anybody on the runway wearing a pair but they're available there on the you see on the table they've got a pair of the loafers also that a couple of the models were wearing i think if you scroll down here you see the the stitch of the loafers there but i don't actually recognize or see any of those flipping shoes maybe it's this actually maybe it's that yeah there we go i think there's a pair there maybe that kid here is wearing a pair but it looks like it looks a bit different it looks like it's got a tip in the front there i'm not really sure if that's the same shoe 
I don't know if it is. Maybe it is. Who knows? But either way, looks really great. Um, I love the colorways. Again, like I said, it's a bit of a challenging shoe to wear, but definitely something that I will be prepared to kind of try out and see what the vibe is. I think the retail was kind of expensive. I remember when I first saw the when the first colorways dropped that were kind of a classic or a Nike shot, shot colorway in the black and the reds. So I'm interested to see what the other what they priced at. But if I'm not mistaken, they were quite pricey. Let me see if I can find them here. Um, Martin Rose Nike Shock. Yeah, let's see. There was a black and something colorway. That was the one, that black one there. Uh, so, okay, they're available and still in black in Nike.com. That's crazy if they're still available to purchase. I would have thought they would have sold out a long time ago. Okay, cool. It's just like a, it's like a holding page. It's not actually available to purchase, it looks like, courtesy of the store. But you got them available there for £179.95. pence. Basically, 180 They're a bit pricey, isn't it? A bit pricey, mate. I'm not going to lie. They're fucking a bit pricey. It's a bit mad to purchase these for that fucking price they're available sold out yeah as you can see they're sold out no need to wait for the pictures um and what are they going for in terms of stock x how much are they going for i'd imagine probably a lot right okay 225 pounds to 367 pretty pricey for them but i did quite like the first colorways that they put out again a classic sort of shot colorway i'm just not a fan of the mule type of shape and i feel like with a shoe like this you probably want to wear them with a proper heel because you're gonna you know they're kind of high and shit and whatever but yeah they did really do a bit of damage on the streets out here of london i think most of the time if you see somebody wearing these out there in the streets you definitely know they've got a passion for fashion it's just a given really <laughs> it'd be the same thing if you see them wearing like martin rose technos right the ones with the lumps and bumps all over them they've definitely got a passion for fashion it's basically impossible that they just purchased them because they like to look at them they're definitely you know they definitely collect magazines like i do and go to fashion shows and obsess over fucking collections and whatnot and buy archive shit definitely that type of person so i love the look of it look at everything they're doing and i'm eager to see some more eager to see some more